This program is brought to you by Dolku Media. Fixing South Sudan, ideas for the new nation. With award-winning journalist Mading Mor. Absolutely. Honorable Ashwin, as you can see, the ideas of the initiatives are varied. The July, uh, on July 8th, uh, the clashes in J1 took place, which was very unfortunate. Including uh, country-specific ones, uh, which... Uh, and the rebellion continued, continued to be... Fixing Ideas for the new nation. Hello and welcome to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Adingo. This week on Fixing South Sudan, a closer look at the activities of the Juba Municipal Council. Juba, the nation's capital, is a city ripe with a lot of problems, some of which are runaway inflation and unregulated markets. Joining us for the show, <coughs> the Honorable Stephen Wani Michael Kaya, the Mayor of Juba Municipal Council. Can he fix Juba? And can he also fix South Sudan by extension through the policy regime of controlling prices in the market? Is it realistic? He is here to break it down, and we are happy to host him on fixing South Sudan. For the first time, our pleasure to welcome him to the show. Welcome to the program. Thank you. How are you? you? I'm fine. So we have a lot to talk about, and your city is teeming with a lot of uh, hard-pressing issues everywhere, literally screams out for attention from roads in disrepair to absence of key infrastructure and a marketplace gone rogue. As they say, it seems that an intervention is needed. And you are saying business has to change. Welcome to the program. Uh, thank you. <coughs> uh, first of all, I would like to uh, uh, salute uh, well, the people in the city across the country and uh, globally that uh, I'm so happy today uh, that you invite me into your program to highlight some of the problems facing the city council. Uh, we in the city council, of course, uh, is known as the capital city of the Republic of South Sudan, and uh, is hosting the state headquarters, Jubek State, and also hosting the Republic of, of South Sudan. Uh, actually, uh, the city is having a lot of problems, as I uh, stated before simply because of uh, economic prices. Uh, if you go back to uh, 2016, when the country decided to devaluate the currencies against our SSP, against uh, the hard currents, this is actually where the, 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 the problem started. Uh, after all the incidences that happened in the country 2013-2016. So, from that time, the inflation on the market has become a problem. And that's why we as a city council, we decided to come up with the modalities how we can really help our citizens in the, in the market. Uh, second to it is that uh, South Sudan is not a productive country. We depend on uh, import. It is only the oil that we export. We don't have industries, we don't have factories, we don't have anything. Uh, it is well known, economic-wise, that uh, prices in the market depend on demand and supply. It's well known. But in our case, it's become uh, different. Uh, That's why we came up with uh, what we call uh, uh, price and control department that we are trying to set up. Reason for this is that so that we can be able to monitor, regulate, and evaluate our market's prices. 
this is the, one of the, of, the, of, the, of the step that we have taken as a city so that really we can be able to help our people. If you go now to the market, there's no any common ground in, a, in, in terms of prices. Between a shop and shop, they have their own uh, prices. And if, if you ask them, is they, they give a diff different reasons. One, one of the common reasons is that the, 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 the dollar in the market is so high. And then uh, one of the reasons they are the, the telling us uh, is, is about the taxation system in the country. Uh, they talk of uh, so many roadblocks and a lot of things that they explain. Yeah. You want to bring sanity to the market. Yeah. And how soon are you implementing that policy? It's uh, on process and I'm quite sure it will be out as soon as possible. Uh, because really we need to, to, to set up that uh, body uh, so that uh, they can be able to follow even the, 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 the wholesalers in the market right away when they brought uh, when, when, when they bring the, their goods and put into the store we shall be part of that uh, activity so that we can see the way bills how much that it costs the goods so that when it goes into the retailers also we need to know and this is the main task that we, 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 we decided that maybe it will help our people. When businesses hear of price controls, this is a subject of debate whether governments should intervene in the markets and set the prices. It has been uh, put in place in other places, but always has a lot of challenges. Do you think uh, the local businesses will be receptive to this idea? Yeah, actually, we, we held a meeting. Uh, it's not out of blue. Uh, you know, if you want to come up with, uh, with the policies, you need to sell them. You need to sell it out, first of all. Uh, we, have, we, we sat with the business people and uh, we, we told them about our idea. And also, they have some challenges that they need to work with us as a partner so that we can be able to address their problem while we are implementing our policies. Because there's nowhere that uh, 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 X and everybody can uh, work as they want. You know, like uh, uh, if you go to, the, to Sub Libya and you come to Konya Konya, they don't have a common price. They don't have a common price. And uh, we as a local government, it is our mandate really to see into it that uh, uh, our public... Uh, our public enjoy uh, their privileges. So this is actually uh, what we have decided and I think uh, it will go through. When you talk of price regulations, you have to be able to determine the ceiling, price ceiling and the price floor. And that is the maximum and the minimum. And that is the most controversial aspect. How do you just come up with the price of a good. So it must be complicated and it would require that you have a complicated bureaucracy. So on the capacity issues, how do you intend to address those? Yeah, actually, you know, uh, uh, South Sudan is one of the uh, free trade economy country. And we believe on that, uh, but uh, uh, in the level of the local government, of course, I think uh, uh, we need to serve our people. Uh, whether it is uh, uh, controversial, but uh, we want to make sure also our people are need to be to, to, to be helped. And uh, the price, the, the the Department of Price and Control, some of the Chamber of Commerce are going to be to, to be involved so that they. Be the, the, let the, we need them also to own the system, okay? We need them to be part and parcel of this de, de, department so that they don't feel like they are seated. And we are going to be fair. This is what we are going to do. I don't have a complete idea of what you intend to be doing. So do you just come up in other countries? In Kenya, they have the same idea. They have a Price Control Act 
for essential goods and the government comes up uh, with the gazette so in the gazette the prices of the day are set and then all the business they see them when it comes to the context of Juba and in South Sudan so many challenges everywhere so how do you even uh, how do you intend on embarking on this how do you implement it on day to day yeah actually you know we have a ministry of trade uh, industry and uh, its african community uh, this is the the, the ministry that uh, expected to come out with the policies really how to handle such kind of situation but at the moment while those policies are not circulated they are not yet come down to the local government uh, I think this is what we, because really if you go anywhere now in the market, uh, the, prices, uh, the prices are really so high. And uh, even the common people, they used to ask why the dollars has reduced and the prices are still high. You want to and even our, our MPs, they are asking. You want to protect consumers? Of course. Do you have the legal framework for doing so? Yeah, are you saying... The need is so great, we just have to do anything. Actually, you know, uh, the local government is the third layer of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, of the government in the Republic of South Sudan. Uh, local government is an institution of the government. And we have legal adv advisors and we have everything. So I don't think that uh, what we are doing is illegal. Anything that we, are, we, we do at the end of the day is, is, is become legal. Yeah. Do you have bylaws or you are going to come up with bylaws? We have bylaws. We have bylaws. So we have you, local government act when you that have can protect any activities of the, of the, of the, of the, of the local government institutions, whether it is a county or it is a, a, a municipality. When you have yeah. a law for price control, you must have penalties. And are those set out or you are going to customize it? It will be spelled out. It and will be spelled out. So, uh, this is just like a tip of the iceberg. <laughs> that cheating is happening in the market. You are not able to control the market. You mentioned something very important. South Sudan is not producing mm -hmm. a lot. And this is why many of the things being brought from outside people fix at any price they want. Okay. So, for sustainability purposes, what do you think South Sudan should do so that we are not reliant on what is coming from the outside? Actually, you know, uh, uh, my dean, what uh, actually is needed in this country is that, first of all, uh, we need to cease off uh, violence. This is one. Uh, I'm happy that uh, uh, our president of the Republic of South Sudan have uh, exerted his, his effort to sign the peace agreement. And uh, we hope that this time it will be implemented in lead and spirit because when we fought for this country, we fought for a reason. The reason is known, and this is what actually uh, dragged the war of, uh, of, uh, of uh, 50 years. Because actually, what was required in, in, in South Sudan is development. It's development. And uh, South Sudan is very potential if it comes into, 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 into businesses. So, uh, we don't have really to suffer while we have uh, resources. I'm quite sure if we didn't, we, if we, we couldn't pick up the crisis of 2013, but this time, we could, have, uh, we, we could have developed, industry could have been in South Sudan, everything. So this issue of uh, depending on uh, importing the goods outside the country, yes, it is there, but not everything. We need peace to kick off. We need peace to kick off. Why don't we take a break from it? Thank you. Welcome to Dolco Media Services. We have so many services for you, such as video production, camera hiring, sound system hiring, event management, 
passport photo, stand up comedy, printing, drama, music, dance, multimedia, and photography. Dol Comedia Services, our culture, our pride. Welcome back to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Ading Or, and with us in the program, Honorable Stephen Wani Michael Kaya, the mayor of Juba Municipal Council. You can think of a time when Juba was the boom town, and even some commentators called Juba Jubai. The city was on a massive takeoff, and then the crisis happened. You are saying with peace, Juba could kick off again. What is the impact of peace if it holds? Actually, the impact of peace, first of all, as a people of this country, uh, we have been affected seriously with the, with the crisis. Uh, we have people, displaced people who are now in the and the neighboring countries, some of them have been hosted by the UN. When peace comes, they will return back home. This is one of the priorities that we want because we are, we, we, we are missing ourselves. Others are in neighboring countries, others are in uh, POC. When peace comes, first of all, these people have to come back home. Second to it is that the investors who ran away from the country, they're coming back again. And uh, For this dividend to come, yeah. it mu there must be a master plan in place. There must be a vision in place. And Juba is growing in population, and also there's a lot of development activities going on, but it's happening haphazardly. Anyone just gets a plot and builds something. There's no planning. So, in brief, what do you think? How do you see Juba changing and changing in a conventional way? Uh, actually, in any institutions, uh, what first have to be done is the strategic plan of the city. Now, now we are developing it for at least 10, 15 years. This is a roadmap for any institutions. And uh, if you see our city, uh, actually it's not meeting the international standard, simply because uh, if you see our roads, uh, it's not in place. Uh, our residential areas, some open spaces have been occupied. And uh, it needs a lot of, uh, of, uh, of work to be done uh, before it grow bigger and bigger. One of the things that uh, uh, we are planning, we are already putting in plan, is that the infrastructure itself of the city needs to be put in place. And this is meaning we need to replan the city. Even our Nile, the Nile is not access to the public again. And, and this is not, uh, uh, it's, 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 it's not correct. Because this Nile is supposed to be enjoyed by the public, but it has been beamed up with the hotels that sometimes it's become a uh, hazard to the environment, simply because they are directing the sewers to the river. And, 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 and remember, this Nile, 70% of our population is also that depend on this Nile, and we are polluting it now. So Juba need a lot of, uh, of, of work to be done. Uh, we need a bypass road so that to avoid the conjunction of the, the vehicles. And uh, we need to open up, you know, feeder roads within, 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 within Juba. And even uh, thinking of metro, why not? And we, have, we, we have a malls so that, uh, you know, these markets, that we have, whether it is Konya Konya or any markets, they need to be demolished, then we build malls. By building malls, we have secured the goods of our, of, of our traders because, you know, every year we experience, you know, fire, outbreak in our markets, and it becomes destructive even to the business people. But if we move into malls, the goods are secured, 
security is in place because if you're entering, then you have to be checked. If you're coming out, also you need to be checked. So this is how we need to modernize the city. You are lamenting the bad things that are happening or the things that are not happening. It means that you are not in control. That yeah. you are overwhelmed and you don't even know where to start. Yeah, actually, you know, uh, uh, I've, uh, I've told you before that... Uh, are you in control or not? Uh, in the city? In the city. Yes, of course. Why not? Why not? What have you been able to do successfully? Yeah, actually, uh, in the city, you know, uh, as I said before, we have uh, three, uh, the two governments in the city. We have two governments in the city, state and then uh, national government. And uh, we as a local government always, our role is to implement the policies of the government. And uh, also our own policies, because as I said before, we have uh, bylaws. So we are controlling some situation in the city here as a, as, 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 as a Juba city. We're helping a lot. You are collecting a lot of taxes, a lot of money, and very little to show for it. And people are saying that is part of the problem. It's not that there is no money. It's that when money comes, nothing is done. The roads are not repaired, and there are a lot of potholes industries have not come up the things that the plans that you are talking about who is who is supposed to be implementing them yeah actually uh, it is right for the public uh, to to cry that uh, or to say that uh, uh, the, the expectation is not uh, met uh, if i say it, if i tell you today that uh, before the crisis because we have a lot of activities like uh, waste management uh, before, before the crisis, we always uh, 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 we, 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 we transport uh, waste from, uh, from the city to the dumping site. It's about 1,000 or 2,000, but now you're talking of, 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 of 30,000. Imagine. So the inflation has affected everything. The inflation has affected everything, from 1,000 to 30,000. Can you, can you remember that? Yeah, and even when and it then was now, going on. Yes, now if, we, if, you, can, uh, if you can take uh, 10 trucks for a day, how much money is that? What, what do you and think? And also, is now we are maintaining the, the, our tarmacan, uh, our street in the... the, the in the, in the city. What is the main challenge that you think you're facing? Is it financial? Is it uh, lack of policies? Is it lack of capacity to be able what, uh, to implement what you want? What is the main challenge facing? Yeah, the main challenge is, is the, the inflation of the SSP. Because, uh, yes, people said we collect money, but yet the money that we are collecting cannot implement what we need. This is actually a big, big problem that we have. Like now, we are renovating the Abba Leaf. If I tell you the amount that is going to cost, you will not believe. And then these stomach roads, we are supposed to be engaged in the, in the feeder roads. But, but because of the situation that we have as a country, we are now compelled to focus on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the tarmac roads. And remember, the work of the, of, of the roads always is so expensive. It's very expensive. Do you think, coming back to our main topic, which was price control, is it something that you think will go away when peace comes and then uh, there's a lot of um, hard currency and Juba returns back to normal? Because what is compelling you now is because of the devaluation and is also because our economy is experiencing a lot of problems. So if boom time comes, you will drop the idea of price control. Is that what you are saying? Yeah, actually, we will not drop, uh, we will not drop it uh, because it will help us also to evaluate. Remember I said uh, the, the, the main objective of establishing this department is uh, one is to regulate 
to monitor and evaluation. So when peace come and uh, people are competing in the market, the prices will come down. But it's still it is good for us to evaluate to evaluate the, evaluate the prices on a monthly basis. And when peace comes, what are you going to do differently? We have a lot of things that we are going to do. And are you the man to lead Juba into prosperity? Maybe. Are you fixing South Sudan? Or have you fixed South Sudan? We together will fix South Sudan to become a country peaceful, a country that can be enjoyed by everybody. Have you fixed South Sudan? Or do you intend on fixing it? We are intending to fix because the situation now is still, we need peace to come. Can South Sudan be fixed? Can fixed. be fixed. Can be fixed. What do, you, what do we need to put in place? First of all, we need peace. Second to it is that after the peace, of course, the rule of law will be there. Everything will be there. And then the most difficult part of it is that we need to combat corruption so that the money that we have can be channeled into development you need to combat corruption it means corruption you are to facing be it and probably in a big way is that part of your hindrance the, the corruption need to be combat by all means corruption within city council yep are you combating it or are you saying you, you intend on fighting it i will i will combat corruption when peace comes you need peace to fight corruption even up to now after now, we are doing it. What is the m number one thing you are proud of that in your years that you have been mayor, you are put in place for Juba? Yeah, but, uh, in my time, of course, you know very well if you, are, if you ask anybody who was brought in 2016, he will not tell you any achievement. He will not tell, tell you any achievement because... Uh, there is nothing that you can do really tangible to be seen by the people. It was war time. It was war time. But uh, we are trying to maintain the city. We are trying to make sure the activities continue to be in place. And uh, I'm quite sure uh, city council is one of the institutions that if you go, you see the activities in place. All the workers are working. And... Uh, you can see the activities, not like other, other, other institutions. Honorable Stephen Wani, Michael Kaya, thanks for being on the program. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank, you, so thank you so much. Thank okay. you so much.